All right, take her away, Jeff. All right. I'm still seeing off air. However, I'm assuming we're live. Uh, welcome to Crew Chats episode 14. So for Crew Chats episode 14, we're going to be going over email best practices. Uh, just a few housekeeping items for everyone. If you've missed any previous episodes, you can check them out on YouTube or in the Marketo community uh, where we can keep the conversation going and answer questions and further comments. If there's any questions during the episodes, you can tweet us with the hashtag crew chats. That's K-R-E-W-E -E, chats. Follow any of us uh, using our Twitter handles, which you can probably find in the community because we don't have our lower thirds today, or at least that I can see. Uh, and just for intros, I'm Jeff Krajewski, uh, Marketo champion, and no longer with any affiliation to companies. So anyone looking, I'm available. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Dory. Hey guys, Dory Viscogliosi, Senior Marketing Operations Manager here at Datto. Um, I guess our thing this week, our fun thing, is something that no one would guess about you. Uh, Jeff, did you have oh, one that... Yeah, something... actually, I'm uh, oh, oh, sorry, yeah. stepping back, my uh, fun fact for this week, something that no one would guess, is I've actually been in a major motion picture. Which was what? <laughs> That's the mystery. <laughs> it's actually called The Emperor's Club with Kevin Klein. Emperor's Club. Cool. Not like the Emperor. Kind of like dead poets. It's no, not that kind with uh, <laughs> Mr. Spitzer and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, more so along the lines of Dead Poet Society. Mm. That is a cool fact. All right, Dory, sorry to do your thing. Yeah. No, 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 that's fine. So I don't know if I have any really great facts that someone wouldn't know about me. Um, I guess fun fact is I lived in Costa Rica for a while, and I was. A the free spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that requires explanation. Wait, 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 everybody yeah, knows I'm a free spirit. So that was a really dumb. That was a really dumb thing. Okay, well, next. <laughs> All right, let's go to Jen. <laughs> Who's Jen? up? Oh, oh me. Jen. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I'm Jen Di Maria. I am a marketing automation consultant at Rev Engine Marketing. And my fun fact, and the only reason I thought about it was because none of you guys knew about it, so I must it must be a secret, is that I am a closet gamer. It is a pretty dope fact. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Console or PC? Uh, either. Either or. Depends on the game. Let's go to Julie. <laughs> Who the hell is Julie? Do you mean Jules? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Jules James, or Julie James, if you want to sign up my parents. Um, I am assistant professor uh, at St. Edward's University teaching digital marketing. Uh, something you didn't know, you wouldn't guess about me. I was an engineer, automotive engineer, before I was a marketer. There you go. Very well. And to follow the pack, Joe. Um, yeah, so Joe writes a strategist at Fathom. Um, fun fact that... I'm a pretty straightforward guy. Um, I used to shoot machine guns and shoot mortars for a living. But I think, yeah, that's not super secret. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of boring. That's not so pretty. <laughs> well, let's get moving along. Uh, we're going to go over email marketing, as we said, and, and email best practices. So email marketing and email nurture are critical components to business as we know it today. Uh, since the development of the first electronic mail, shortened to email, back in the 1960s is when it came about. Yeah, the 60s. Um, it spread to experimental use and government use, uh, eventually into civilian use back in the 90s when the internet boom happened. Um, you know, one could hardly imagine doing business today without the use of email, text, or instant messaging. Um, and actually, I'm going to pause for two seconds. We have a newcomer to the game. Andy, you want to do your intro? And the fun fact is something no one would ever guess about you. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Andy Kempf. I'm the conversion marketing manager at Biz Library. And a fact no one knows. Um, Wouldn't guess. All right. I My idol, like who I look after, <laughs> is Winston Churchill. <laughs> So, so you like that's the crown, my guy. I take it. Yeah, oh, that's like a good show. Yeah. I, I do. I do. I like it. Yeah. 
All right. So, so to continue with our 14th episode here, we're going to look at email best practices. Um, just one further reminder that I want to throw out there is you can check out episode 11 of Crew Chats, where we actually discuss the email editor 2.0 in a lot of more depth. Um, so for email best practices, uh, I wanted to get the boring stuff out of the way. Um, you know, we're kind of geeky, all of us, so it may be a little more interesting, but th there's some simple parts to an email. Uh, does anyone want to highlight those? Or I can do that because I'll be the boring one. <laughs> so there, there's obviously two from uh, carbon copy and blind carbon copy. Um, blind mm -hmm. carbon copy is, of course, when someone doesn't see the uh, that blind recipient. Uh, the others, I think, are, are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But then the other main parts are the subject line, uh, which we'll talk a, li a little bit more about afterwards. Uh, the body itself, which can be either HTML or text. Um, just a question out to the crew here is, why do you want email uh, in HTML versus text or both? Um, yeah, that's that's an easy one. Um, the reason you want it in both is, it, well, one, it takes one click of effort to do. And the main reason to do it is just because if somehow uh, client side, email client side uh, settings are going to only produce the, the plain text email, you want to make sure it's still renderable and like clear. So uh, when you do the quick one button pull from HTML, there's still a little bit of cleanup you probably have to do, but um, but it just make sure, the reason you want to do it is it takes like zero effort and to make sure that your message is still clear no matter who receives it in what medium. So when you say the one button pull from HTML, you're referring to email editor 2.0 where you have the automatically copy text from HTML. Correct. I think, I mean, I could be. It's been a minute since I've yeah. created emails, but I think that goes back way far back into uh, Marketo editor history. The WYSIWYG, I think, has always had a copy to HTML or copy from HTML button, or at least as long as I've been using Marketo for a while. Yeah, it, it definitely has it. Um, the only downside is, you know, something like if you have any images, um, let's say there's text in your hero image that's not going to come across natively. So you're going to want to update that. However, and I want to clarify this, if there is alternative text or alt text on your images, that should pour it over from what I've seen. Uh, does anyone have evidence? Definitely not in 1.0. It might in 2.0, um, but it definitely does not in 1.0 as far as I've seen. Okay, great. All right, let's move on to the, the second area that we wanted to address, um, which are just the, the critical parts of an email address. Um, there's the address itself, which has what's called the local part, which is the portion before the at symbol. And then there's the domain, which follows the at symbol. Now, th there's really just one thing that I wanted to call out here uh, for the team, and there's the ability to use special characters, but you can also utilize uh, what's called the, the, you can create comments within your email address using parentheses. So we'll actually share on the community uh, some examples of this uh, for whoever, whoever will be posting this, but it, it's something that you might wanna take into account uh, as you are testing within your Marketo instance and something as well that you might wanna look at as you're looking for cleanup within your database uh, are parentheses and certain items along that line. Um, the third item that we want to highlight today was the authorization, or sorry, the, um, I'm sorry, it's the screen. <laughs> uh, it, it is the authentication. So there's three main part, uh, three main protocols, if you will, for authentication. Uh, anyone want to highlight those? Uh, sure. Um, you know, the, the two main ones, like from an implementation standpoint, when you when you roll out Marketo, uh, SPF, which is Sender Policy Framework, and DKIM, which is Domain Keys Identified Mail. Um, don't really need to know what those stand for. All they are is making sure what together what they're doing is saying the emails that come from you are actually coming from you, and uh, you know it gives a a receiving domain just the the extra assurance that this is not spam. This is a legit send. Um, and it, there, when you set up Marketo, you have to make sure they're set up properly so that uh, all of your your deliverability rate is 
what it should be. So then if the other you don't have this set up, what, what can happen? I was just going to ask, if you don't have this set up, the, the typical scenario is that there's a lot of major, um, a lot of major spam checkers out there. And what can happen is if you do get uh, flagged by any one of these systems, it can have a system-wide effect where any other clients utilizing that might be affected. So you want to make sure these are implemented. And for those that don't know, um, your Marketo admin would have the authority to go in and check the values that you will need to implement. And this does come down to the, uh, the DNS level. So in your domain name servers, you need to actually implement these two protocols for Marketo specifically. Now there's a third one coming out. Uh, anyone want to highlight that one for us? It's not currently utilized with Marketo. However, it is coming on the horizon. And that's DMARC. Just another one to keep note of. Anything else someone wants to add there or should we move on? Uh, no, I think, we're, I think we're good. All right. So the fourth item on today's agenda is we want to talk about the sender reputation and your authority. So this pertains to spam and other things. Uh, Andy, Jen, anyone want to take a stab at this? I guess this, this kind of goes back to when we were talking about, was it just before Christmas, talking about can spam and the double opt-in for Germany. So you have to be so careful. One, what you're putting in your subject lines, if it's going to be put into spam, the keywords that you shouldn't be using if you don't want it to go into spam, um, and making sure that when you're sending it, obviously you have the permission is the biggest, I guess is the biggest thing for any any email that goes out is one, have you got the permission and two, are you going to put that information in there? So you don't use a word like free um, exclamation marks or certain keywords that you don't put in. So use, use subject line checkers to see how well they grade. Um, I think there's one called subjectline.com. We can put the subject line and it grades it out of a percentage if it's going to be a good subject line or not. Um, and then also make sure that you, which I think we're going to go into a bit anyway, but make sure you do that IB testing and see which one's going to have the best open rate but also the best click through rate as well so there's a lot of there's a lot you need to look at and if you don't have that s s uh, d kim and s yes yeah yep. never remember the acronym yeah those letters those, all those acronyms um if you don't have those set up then you're going to get put into spam as well and just don't get blacklisted yeah yeah that's the thing too is I think it's important to realize that it doesn't just affect you, like the world outside of you is greater. So if you do something that gets you blacklisted all over the place, then you're affecting a bunch of other people who are also sending from that domain. Um, that's happened to a few people I know where they weren't doing anything wrong, but they ended up email blacklisted anyway because someone else was, you know, blasting to a million people on a purchase list that didn't have permissions. So they were getting blocked all over the place. So that's important to note too, is make, you know, don't do it just for yourself, do it for everyone else, you know, be nice. Well, there's one also thing that, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Go. Okay, well, one thing that I was looking over this week was um, the way that we, it's like spam trapper or whatever that I've set up, I, I was reviewing, um, the one Marketo Rockstar guide. And when I initially set it up, it was to where like you were going to catch all of the people that are spammy type of addresses, like sales at or um, or at sales or at info or something like that, to where that could ruin your reputation. So you could take them out and blacklist them um, to avoid sending emails to those types of people. That's all I got. You mean we Emailing abuse at, you know, xyz.com. Exactly. You know, yeah. That's not a good lead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I may have totally lost what I was going to say. Never mind. So if you do get blacklisted, how do you get off it? So there's a whole um, uh, process. Um, I forget what Marketo calls it, but it's you can search for it on the community, and it has like a uh, – a checklist of things for you to do and and all, all of them are super basic like hey you should maybe look at your lists and kind of scrub those in a few basic ways 
Um, but then uh, as you as you go on through it, you have to submit a, a ticket back to Marketo saying, yes, I've done all this stuff. And then they, um, you know, uh, clear your, or they, 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 they do something on their end that they. They, they remove you from their quarantined IP. I yeah. may have done it last week. Yeah, <laughs> it may have happened in the past week. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, <laughs> but you know. It's totally Dory's so fault. Didn't you have a you had a dedicated IP at your last company, yeah, right? Yeah, Eddie Marketer. I was working with a dedicated IP. Uh, we were sending millions of emails, and literally, um, and so at that point, it really was critical to manage our own reputation and ensure that we weren't sending to anyone. Uh, you know, a few things there are. Let's say you're sending to a list that you haven't sent to in a while for one reason or another. Um, I probably would advise against it from just the, the basic tenets of not sending to people who you haven't sent to in a while. But if you're going to be sending to a list that you haven't sent to in a while, you can do things like throttling your sends so that you batch them out sort of with people who you know will respond so that your actual deliverability rates will go up. Because if you send a whole bunch of junk all at once, um, receiving servers are going to say, whoa, 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 this, this, you know, this is sending out a whole bunch of junk. Let's just block them. So if you actually kind of slowly release it in in batches to some degree and kind of throttle that, and that also relates back to warming up an IP if you have a dedicated IP. Um, exactly. yep. Yep. Those sorts of things are going to help your deliverability on a list where you may not have been as communicative with them in the past and you want to try to improve your deliverability. I don't think it's going to help tremendously, to be totally honest. And I know that, um, you know, there are some IPs out there that Marketo has that are just not great for sending. They do have, they've got some trusted IPs that they can put you onto if you've um, shown that you are, you know, having very, very high deliverability and um, you're clearly doing all of these good things to keep your lists clean, but, and we've talked about this before, right? Like bounce policies and suspending people or blocking people or marking them invalid after so many bounces. So I think that these are all things that kind of play into um, your sender reputation. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head as far as like the, the warm up, because like when you, it's been a minute since most people have done an IP warm up, but like the thing with it is if you haven't, if there's a large portion of your database you haven't nurtured in a while with any kind of email, uh, you may, you got to keep, once you warm up, you kind of got to keep pace. And as soon as you fall off of that, that pace, you may need to go back and reinitiate that warm up phrase phase. But, uh, the, the phrase that, uh, <laughs> that I wanted to say, you need to search in the community. If you are blacklisted is blacklist remediation. Uh, if you search that in the Marketo community, you can come up with like the whole list of like what their steps are, uh, what they ask you to do and how you go about submitting to get you removed from their quarantined IP. And uh, the whole blacklist thing is another just great example of, it, there is an additional cost to having a dedicated IP, but depending on your organization, it's um, hugely beneficial if, if you can justify the cost just to make sure that you can beyond a shadow of a doubt control your uh, sense. Because we've got some clients that are on shared IPs that uh, through no fault of their own, we're helping them manage everything as best as they can, but because it's a shared IP, the, uh, the receiving authority or however it gets calculated because other people aren't doing their due diligence that are on that shared IP, uh, everybody suffers. So it's kind of like, um, you know, the general societal rule of just don't be a jerk and good things will eventually happen. But yeah, some people are jerks on shared IPs. Yeah, two things on a dedicated IP is one, you have to have enough sending volume actually, because if you're not sending enough at all, then the dedicated IP can kind of backfire on you because you don't have enough of a reputation. It's kind of like credit. Um, yeah. You don't have any credit cards. You'd think, hey, I have a great credit score, but you actually have a horrible credit score because you don't send enough. You don't have enough credit out there. So you don't have enough of a sender reputation if you don't send enough. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just don't be a jerk. <laughs> but Good rule for living. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in general. So okay, so let's you know if we've if we've got one second, like I can say what I know. What happened in our instance was that we forgot one of our standard filters on Ascend, and so we did email people who we hadn't emailed in a very long time, and that was the very first thing that I looked at, and I was like, oh, we hit all these people who we hadn't hit in over a year, um, and so that was my you know I was like, well, 
this is where this is where we failed. Um, and so that's something that we've we've updated and you know put another another level of security in place, basically. Yeah. Um, did we lose Jeff? <laughs> awesome. But everything's a learning experience. <laughs> I think we did. I, I think we did. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll pick up where no, you are. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Oh, <laughs> you see me? Hear me? Yep. Got you. Got you. All right. Uh, so just just another thing that we wanted to talk about. Um, you know, how do we boost our email performance? What are what are the key elements that you need in your email structure to get that you know get that elevated status? I, th I think Dory hit on a couple of them already, uh, just in terms of, oops, I got Dory selected. Uh, you know, like managing things to keep that deliverability up, like just, just in terms of deliverability, um, easy data management campaigns like bounce management is a really good way. Uh, we had a client go from 90% uh, to about 98%, and that was on a shared IP of, uh, of email deliverability just by introducing like, hey, if you got a lot of people in your database that are bouncing, and granted their sends were a little bit uh, low to middle volume uh, quantities, but if you've got a lot of people on, on, your, on your list that are bouncing, then obviously you wanna get those scrubbed out as soon as possible. And you know, there, there's different schools of thought on like how conservative you should be with something like that, but um, I generally lean towards more strict and then, you know, delete the the, the problem children quickly. Um, but then again, with bounces, you got to deal with hard bounces and soft bounces separately. But I think we we may have addressed that on another episode. So what about um, just moving along to use of tokens within emails? How how do you guys utilize tokens today? You know, it, are there best practices we can glean from that? Game of clones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, last year talked about how at Summit you can use tokens for basically everything. Um, he's a real jerk. No one likes him, and his beard is lame. So, uh, I I love tokens for just about everything, and everything from like sending name, so you can make your emails look like they come from a human, and you can make it look like they come from the rep that owns the lead, which is super awesome. Uh, you can you, so you can use them in the to from kind of kind of fields. You can make the reply to go right back to them, which is your salespeople will just worship the ground on which you tread if you do that for them. Uh, you can put them in the body personalization. I think I saw a stat recently. I'm going to misquote the stat, so I'll just say the conversion rates were astronomically bigger when you do any kind of personalization in an email. Uh, which yeah, especially especially when you have the signature be from their actual rep. Yeah, like that, that one example, yeah. And, you know, in 2017, that should be a no-brainer. Uh, you know, people respond better when they think, like, it's tailored to them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can use them basically anywhere from, uh, you know, the body of the email, the to from. Uh, I don't – can you use them in a subject line? I don't I don't think you can. Can you? You can, you can but on sales yeah. insight, it'll show the token. Yes. Ah, sales insight, gotcha. <laughs> the one downside – yeah. Yeah. And then I know another one that uh, has gotten a lot of a lot of traction recently. Um, well, even even with velocity scripting, got a lot of traction recently in the on the Champ blog from uh, Courtney Grimes, was the idea of you know when you put a copyright in the footer of your emails, um, you can do that with a token. You can do it with velocity scripting. But uh, Dory and I were talking about that I think earlier this week about like. Yeah. Why do we even do that? <laughs> do we need a copyright in our emails? Because I'm pretty sure if there's any content they download, it, it's on the content for liability reasons. But like, I don't know. I you think your one of those things in, in your email and everything. I mean, I yeah. think best practice would just be to continue putting copyright year. Um, I, yeah, but it's like, like I guess that's what we should do. <laughs> yeah, is there a legit reason? I think it's like one of those things we just accepted as marketers. We should do yeah. it. I mean, I really, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, that some, to some degree that's the case. If anybody out there in the world knows a better reason, please write to us. Tell us. Yeah. We assume it's legal because <coughs> law ninjas just make everything hard. But send us handwritten mail because we don't use email. No. <laughs> we just mark it with it. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so to get us moving again, how about the topic of A-B testing with emails? Where do you use it? Uh, you know, what are the areas that you can utilize? And do you have any hints or best practices there? Test all the things. Yes. Test everything. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is, yes, test all the things. Do not test all the things at the same time. Yes, <laughs> there, you run a yes. Test, you run a <laughs> test of subject line, body copy, images, and all that. Well, great. One, one email is way different than the other, but you don't know why. Um, what we like to do is roll out, and I'm sure Jen likes to do too, is you know you have a plan of like first we're going to test the subject line this is going to run for five cents then we're going to declare a winner and then we're going to test the cta and then we're going to let that run five cents declare a winner and then test i don't know what else the uh the the images or the pre-header or whatever it is uh so that you you understand what the delta is all along the way but i would say as far as like pitfalls go um marketo's inborn a b testing uh, so with an email program, that 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 A/B testing is pretty pretty amazing. But usually the channel progression statuses aren't great. So from a attribution standpoint, like I just tell people straight up, do not use email programs. Um, but Champion Challenger, which you could use in just about any other type of program, only works in the in the event of a triggered program. So you're back to square one of how do you do an A/B test? You've got to do the random sample approach of when you when you have a flow step for send email, you have that choice. If random sample is X percent, send email A. If whatever else, send email B or C, D, however many tests you want to do. I would encourage just 50-50. But uh, that, that's the best way to do a true A-B test in any type of program from engagement to event to default, whatever. I think also when I've, when I've done A-B testing, I've always kept a record of what I've tested. Like in, it's been always been like a really simple spreadsheet because when you do all the tests, I put dates on it, what the subject lines, if it was subject lines, subject lines were A, B, if you want to do multiples, what percentages they got. And then, then you say if you're going to do another test or if you're going to decide this is how you're going to move going forward. Because if you don't have that record, someone's going to say, well, why are we doing this subject line? Or why are we doing a button that's in blue rather than purple? Example. So if you have the proof of all the tests you've done and what works and what doesn't, then you can say, well, we've done all this testing and this is what worked and this is what didn't work. So for me, keep records of it all because, you know, you, someone's always going to come back and say, why are you doing that? Prove it to me. They like doing that to us. <laughs> yeah, it's nerds. So what, yeah. what areas do you, what areas do you guys actually test within your emails? Oh, subject lines from addresses. Reply to address. Chrome address is a good one. I never, uh, I always overlook that one, but I think that's that's an interesting one to test. Like, yeah. when when you do it, Jules, is it like uh, testing from a person versus like a company, or how do you how do you normally run it? Yeah, it'll be from either from the sales rep versus company, um, or we've also done sales rep versus like departments, or like sales at, or certain person's first name, um, and then we've done like key account managers versus just uh, inside sales reps, so depending on which names are recognized by uh, the users that we're sending to. Gotcha. There's only like five or six different ones. It's, it's, it tends to be the salesperson, the one that they have that interaction with is the one that got the most traction, especially yeah. if it was replied to them as well. Yeah, another thing that we tested was in our subject lines, um, putting like in brackets beforehand what it was that we were advertising versus not having that so like webinar and then a description of the webinar versus just a, a description of the webinar uh that was another thing that was a big testing point that um that we we did at, at eMarketer and like Jules said coming from a person versus coming from kind of like a more clearly distribution story which just quick which will work better having webinar at the beginning or not having webinar um, so web having webinar in there within the brackets did have a positive impact. Um, Interesting. But it wasn't something that we did consistently because it, I, I think there were also, I mean, there were other random words that we could use um, that would improve our results based on like what type of content we were um, 
we were pushing. So there were, it was no matter what we did, there, we were also always testing another variable because it was always for a different piece of content. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I just wondered if having other webinar or white paper or event at the beginning made a difference for them to open it or not. It definitely, I think it, it improved. One thing that it actually sort of improved was our conversion from when someone went to, you know, opening to clicking to, to registration actually, because it gave them a clearer idea upon opening the email, what they were in for essentially. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great, great insight. Do y'all ever test like emojis in your subject line? I, I'm, I'm guessing the answer is probably no. Cause I think we all come from B2B backgrounds, but I'm just curious. I did, I did I know. in yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't want to email for my husband. Um, he is the vice president of a, a chain of bicycle stores, and so we put like a little bicycle emoji. Um, and it didn't perform statistically significantly better, but it definitely wasn't worse. Hmm. Interesting. It was fun. So B to C then maybe better. That's that's what I've seen too. Is like. That's the only time I've ever, ever actually seen anyone want to do an emoji was B to C, but just curious. I feel I think like it depends B2C. on their, yeah, maybe. Well, the type of company too, like the the one, the, the people that I know who did it for them where it worked really well is, you know, they're a really sort of laid back fun company. So it just seemed to work for their audience, which I guess would be why you test it anyway. Cause you wouldn't think in B2B it would necessarily make a huge difference. Not right. One of the things well, that I've seen with emojis is all the cool ones you can't use in Marketo. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Yeah, I did do uh, constant uh, no Mailchimp for. I know that's blasphemy, but for my husband, I did it through Mailchimp. You're dead to me. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Champion I mean, status revoked. <laughs> wait, wait a second. That's a that's a touchy subject. There. <laughs> You're alumni for life. You're good. Um, on a serious note, I think right. I think it's Unicode 5.2 and later. You or you can't use anything after Unicode 5.2. You can use anything before it. I think. Don't quote. That's a good place to start googling. <laughs> All right. Just for uh, I think we had a final thought from Andy. Did we? Uh, okay. So with yeah, I was just commenting on B two C emails. Whenever adding like the the subject line, like Jen said, it really just comes from the personality of the company. Um, one of the places that I subscribe to is Chubby's, and that sounds awful, but it's like Ben Shorts wear. <laughs> and I was I was by Ann Handley. I was directed to look at them, look at their site because she thought, hey, their copy is so good, you could remove all imagery and logos and still know that this was the company. Um, that you were looking at, like, you know, it was their site based off of the copy and what their messaging was. And so and when you look at their emails, they do the same exact thing. They play on the sub or the uh, subject line down to pre header down to the first line of copy. It all like plays along with each other. So it just depends. And they were the ones, correct me if I'm wrong, but they used the phrase boom shakalaka as a CTA on a button. Exactly. Which yes. is, you know, my ultimate career goal. If you are a <laughs> potential client of Fathom that wants to use Boom Shakalaka on a button, I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to check that box in my professional career. <laughs> Free selling. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it. We're at about uh, 33 minutes for this episode uh, to keep everyone's time short enough and give you the rest of your days. Thanks for joining Crew Chats. Again, check us out in the community and in YouTube and look forward to talking with you soon.